let's talk about where confidence comes from. Now, many of you know that this is one of those topics that I love to not only help you understand, I wanna help you build it and put it into practice in your life. But I wanna start by sharing a story with you. This is from a book that I love. It's called Real Artist Don't Starve by Jeff Goins. It's a great book for anyone creative, running a side business, running a small business. It helps you have confidence in charging for your business. But there's one particular story that I wanna highlight for today. So one of the things he talks about, and this is in the very beginning of the book, he talks about Michelangelo. Now, I didn't know a lot about Michelangelo, but one of the things that I learned from this book is that all of his life, Michelangelo was told he had been born into a noble family. So this sense of identity shaped everything about how he led his life, how he uh, managed his work, how he thought of himself, how he interacted with people. Like This was a very strong part of who he was and how he saw himself, and as a result, how other people saw him as well. There's a great quote in here. It says, This is from um, a Michelangelo scholar named William Wallace. He said, if you grow up believing that you are connected to one of the most important families in Europe and everyone around you believes that, well, that informs your entire persona and that's how people treat you. This belief in his own nobility guided Michelangelo shaping his life and paving the route to his success. But here's the interesting part. It wasn't true. He actually wasn't a part of a noble family. It says uh, this was something that historians discovered years later. And then a great line here in this book by Jeff Goins, he says, what made him succeed was not a genetic predisposition or some cosmic giftedness. It was how he thought of himself. He thought of himself as nobility. He believed that about himself. That wasn't true at all. But it drastically shaped how he viewed himself. One of the things that Matthew McConaughey talks about in his new book, Green Lights, is this fun story from when he was little and he was named Mr. Texas. And this idea that he was little Mr. Texas and he won this award shaped his sense of identity in many different ways. Now, you might be listening to this and you might be thinking, great, Christy, good for them. They were little Mr. Texas, Michelangelo, like that's not me. I don't have some unbelievable source of identity where that gives me confidence. I draw my confidence from this title, this family name, this status this job position, I don't have that. But here's what's interesting. The fact that Michelangelo, or in our example, Matthew McConaughey, had these moments in their life that shaped their identity, that gave them confidence to go for it. What what is it? Anything. To audition for that movie, to charge more for his painting, to go for things in life. See, when you have confidence, it gives you the gusto to go for it. Confidence gives you the courage to try. You might fail. You might risk it. You might fall on your face. You might be embarrassed, but you have the courage to go for it because you're confident. Well, you might be thinking, well, well, I'm not though. I'm not little Mr. Texas. I'm not Michelangelo. I don't have some source of a really strong identity that I can draw this confidence from. So what am I supposed to do? What do you do if you don't have the confidence to go for it? Here's what's interesting. Going for it builds confidence. So you can have confidence that gives you the courage to go for it, or you could just go for it and that builds confidence. Either way, they work together. So if you don't have the confidence you need to try that thing, apply for that job, launch that product, start that business, it's okay. You don't have to have the confidence to go for it. You can go for it, and when you do, watch how that act builds confidence. When you are courageous over time, when you stop waiting to not be scared to do the thing you wanna do, and instead you just decide you're gonna do it scared, those acts of bravery build authentic confidence. You naturally think to yourself, what else can I do? 
Well, well, it worked. No one slapped my hand. No one laughed me out of the room. Someone bought that product. And it gives you the courage to go for it again and try something else new. That confidence fuels more confidence, which means you're gonna go for more things, which fuels more confidence. But so many people sit around and they wait to feel confident before they go for it. But I'm here to tell you, you can go for it. And in going for it, that confidence will be built. You know, I've shared some examples with you all before, one of which was when I slalom skied for the first time. And after I finally stayed up and I was actually able to ski the whole rest of the day, that's all I thought about. Why? Because I tried something new. Because I did something scared. Because I did something I didn't think that I could do. That built confidence. I naturally thought, what else can I do? What else can I try? And not just in water skiing. What else can I try in work or on social media or in life? You start dreaming bigger and better dreams. You start going for bigger and better things all because you decided to go for it. You stopped waiting around for some magic feeling or some title or some permission slip or someone to give you the right approval for you to go for it. You just decided to go for it anyway. And in going for it, you build confidence. It's the same way I got into speaking. When I decided to speak for the very first time and I had no right to be on any stage in front of anyone with a microphone and I just decided to go for it anyway and then guess what? I survived. I thought, well, maybe maybe I could do that again and again and again. And 12 years later, I'm still speaking all because I decided to go for it. I wasn't confident before I spoke the first time, y'all. I wasn't confident at all. It was in going for it that I built confidence. Or even just this is a silly example. Let's use a totally different example, not slalom skiing, not speaking professionally. Let's use a very practical, real life scenario. The first time I took all three of my children, age five and under, out of the house by myself. I was scared out of my mind. I'm like, okay, we got sippy cups, we've got diapers, we've got 17 car seats, strollers, you hold that person's hand, you don't run in the road, you don't fall on the ground. I was a wreck. My mind was firing on every possible cylinder simultaneously, trying to make sure I could manage what felt like 27 kids at the time. Out in public, back in the car, back home in one piece, and I did it. Y'all, I did it. Do you know what that did for my sense of confidence? When I got home, I was like, okay. I don't know what you did today, but uh, I took all three of my kids out of the house. Y'all, I know it sounds silly, but up until that point, when Mary Grace was a baby and I had never taken all three kids by myself out of the house, I was terrified of doing that. It seemed overwhelming. It seemed insurmountable. It seemed impossible. How, what, 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 what will happen if I get stuck or someone runs away or someone steals someone? Or I, I didn't know. But then I went for it. I just did it. I just tried it. I didn't feel confident leaving the house that day. I felt terrified, but I just went for it. I just tried it. And I got home with those three kids all in one piece and I was confident. I thought, okay, okay. You did that once. You can do it again. And now I take them everywhere. I take them everywhere. I take them out to eat at a restaurant by myself. That's insane. But I can do it because through trying things, I showed myself what I'm capable of. That is how confidence is built. So stop waiting to feel confident, to go for it. Instead, go for it and watch how that builds your confidence.